Hello? Hi, I'm uh, Paul Saab. Uh, welcome to day two of uh, At Scale, Networking at Scale. Uh, today's a little special event we wanted to dedicate specifically to IPv6. You know, some people are like, why IPv6? You know, or they're like, you're just an IPv6 zealot. And, um, you know, if. <laughs> You know, I, I actually, you'll be a little disappointed. Um, I actually could care less about V6. Uh, I care more about the health of the internet and the growth of our industry more than um, the protocol itself. And, you know, I think that's the, the issue that we face with V6 is that people have been screaming this thing for over 20 years. And, you know, there really hasn't been much growth or people perceive there's much, not much growth or they say it's too hard to do or there's just no business case. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, last year I did this presentation uh, at, at the large at scale conference where it was trying to get more content producers and people excited or at least starting to think about. It. And, you know, the first slide that I had put up is like, why did we do this? And, you know, you look at this was back in September. It was, you know, taken from Jeff Houston's uh, site of uh, what, how many allocations of slash eights were still around in the uh, RIRs. And, you know, this was like basically everyone was out but Africa. And then you're like, well, let's fast forward to today. And, you know, I apologize. I'm not as cool with slides as the professional slide maker that made the previous one. But you look, Africa took a run when the rest of the world announced that they were out. So, you know, Africa isn't going to save us from our IPv IPv IPv4 shortage. It's really going to just delay and people that can get that address space. But ultimately, we need to start looking at how we're going to grow, you know, V6. And then, you know, last year we showed that, you know, over 10% of the, the world uses Facebook every day over V6. You know, and since then, you know, we've grown to, you know, 13% of the Internet today accesses Facebook every day. That's 30% growth, you know, in a, in a few short months, right? And it's only growing faster and faster. And you know, when I break it down, you know, just to the United States, where, you know, most of us are, granted most of the growth of the Internet is outside the U.S., but it's interesting to see that the U.S. is actually over 30 percent now. Uh, compared that to 23 percent just, um, you know, last September. And another interesting stat is the four major carriers in the United States, 45 percent of them come to Facebook over V6 every day. This was right around 33 percent last September. Um, if all things align, in June it will be well above 50 percent, and then this fall we should hit somewhere between 60 and 65 percent. Um, I won't say why that is, but it, those of you that know, you understand what's happening in the industry. And then, oh, by the way, V6 is actually still faster. Um, and we're not the only ones that are saying this now. Um, both LinkedIn and another company called Sofo6 have released basically very similar numbers, similar data analysis. It's about 15 percent faster. And that's, you know, some people will, will be skeptical. Um, you know, the way we ran our tests is we took a large slice of the population in, on all these carriers and forced them all to do V4. And then we allowed the rest to do happy eyeballs. And, you know, it came out to be around 15% faster. We still see that today, even as more carriers continue to turn on. Um, we haven't done analysis outside the United States yet, but as soon as more carriers come online, we will. But then, you know, you look at, okay, well, you know, V6 is growing. Where is it going on the Internet? Where are the carriers, right? And, you know, those of you that were around in, you know, for the World V6 launch, this is kind of what the growth has looked like on most, you know, carriers. It goes up, 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 and then it kind of flatlines. And this is one carrier in particular in the United States. You know, it took them many years to get to, like, 80 90% of their users accessing, you know, sorry, being V6 capable today. This is actually what happens today. It's no longer years. You know, this is a carrier in Canada. They went from zero to 50 to 70 percent in a matter of months, okay? So it's not like we're going to, you know, start seeing slow growth. The slow growth has already taken place, right? It's the, the big players that took the, the gamble in the early, you know, in, uh, in 2012. The, that, that, you know, those people stepped up. They did all the hard work. And now it's like it's much easier, much less risk for carriers to go out there and turn it on, and that's what happens. Or they do this. They run a little test for a while, and then they get, oh, okay, it's good, and then they turn it on. This is a carrier in the UK where they've just, you know, they plan to have 99% of their CPEs enabled by July, 
And you know, this is, I think they've only enabled like half of their CPEs so far. So this is kind of what's happening all across the world. Um, it's happening in mobile carriers. You know, uh, they're just turning it on like crazy. Um, a lot of carriers are waiting for you know, another company to get you know, V6 only working on their handsets before they enable, because they don't really want to turn on one handset and then turn on the other. And those of you that were on the Wi-Fi here, you may have noticed that your VPNs don't work. You, you know, certain, you know, if you, the VPNs were, not, were written poorly, they, they don't understand how to work in a NAT64 and DNS64 environment. These are the environments that our applications are going to work on in the future in mobile. And mobile is really where the growth of the internet is happening. And the point of the Wi-Fi was to basically point out that, hey, there's a lot of stuff that's broken. Most stuff actually works. Like, I actually do 99% of my work on a V6 only network today, and the only thing that breaks for me is Dropbox. And that's just a desktop client. Um, and that's, you know, that, that's actually pretty good. Like, somebody who has to do all their work on, you know, network devices, you know, software engineering, I actually don't need V4 for my work. You know, I'm lucky in that. Our VPN is dual stacked, and our VPN can connect over V6. You know, we have a great, great team here that's also dedicated to the cause. It's not just me at Facebook. It's the whole company believes that we are in a you know situation where we need to grow the internet to be you know V6 capable. And you know, Najm said it right yesterday. We need to figure out a way to turn it on in the next decade, or turn it off in the next decade or two. But the big problem is content. So here's a graph from Six Lab of Cisco. Okay, we started in 2012 with a V6 launch of around 6% of websites that had V6 capable. And it's grown to around 16 to 18%, depending on who's measuring. So you look at that and you say, okay, so content has only grown at two point, you know, a little over 2.5%, while the number of eyeballs has grown at 13 times. Sorry, not 2.5%. Uh, a little over two and a half times and over 13% growth of eyeballs. That's actually kind of a sad state of affairs. I mean, I understand many people here use cloud providers that don't support it. You should be yelling at them. Like it's, you know, especially since we've been showing that in mobile, you know, it's faster. Why aren't we getting down the throats of these cloud providers saying, why are you not doing this? Why are you not putting this thing first? Facebook is not allowed to launch a single product single stack. It just doesn't happen. And how do we do that? We have our traffic engineering team. They just, by default, they will dual stack every site. You can't push code here that doesn't work in a dual stack environment. You actually can't even work on a development server at Facebook that, does, that has a V4 address. There is no V4 addresses on the Linux machines that people log into here. That's how serious we are about you know, V6, making sure that it's a first class citizen on the internet and at Facebook. And that's why we did the Wi-Fi, is people need to realize that this is where development is going and this is where we need to be focusing. And by breaking you guys, I apologize. It's kind of like, hey, let's see how this works out. You know, and the, the interesting thing is, is you know, most people probably didn't notice on their phones. It was really just the VPNs that were broken. The other interesting thing is 70, over 70% 70 of the bits that travel to mobile devices on a mobile network, this is not Wi-Fi, LTE, does native V6 today. And I got this stat from one of the carriers in the United States, and you know, this was a big thing for them because they basically now can de-emphasize you know, purchasing of like CGN equipment and things like that because the majority of their traffic now is shifting to the native V6. And that tells you that the majority of stuff that people do on V6, sorry, the majority of stuff people do on their phones is V6, and so and those are the largest players. You know, I think Facebook is somewhere I forget over 40 or 50 minutes per day, and that's 40 or 50 minutes per day on mobile devices that is, you know, V6, you know, enabled data. And then, you know, to top it all off, I said, okay, let me mine the data from yesterday's Wi-Fi and see, you know, what, you know, DNS names were were coming back and what was dual stacked, you know, and the the requests that came back with a V4 address, only 12.5% of the stuff that people at our event yesterday had a quad A record associated with it. And I think that's a little sad, you know, for people in the internet industry to still today, four years after the launch, still not actually taking V6 seriously is something that I think we need to correct and which is why Facebook is trying to uh, push this. Like we don't just talk to content people, we talk to the carriers, we talk to everybody. Um, 
because we believe that in order to connect the world, you know, as part of our 10-year mission, is we need V6 to give the developed world and the underconnected, sorry, the un undeveloped world and the underconnected and the unconnected, the same type of connectivity that we have today, you know. And there's a, a great line by um, the one of the chief t uh, architects at Deutsche Telekom. It's like IP was originally created for you know end-to-end -end communication, and we don't have end-to-end -end communication on the internet anymore. You know, we don't have the you know the ability to actually talk directly. To a, to a machine, we have to talk through NATs or through proxies or whatever. And you know, think about what a world would be like if we just had end-to-end -end, end -end, end -end connectivity and we didn't have to think about firewall punching and all that other lovely stuff. So, you know, that's basically my spiel of um, you know why we we decided to have a V6 day. We have a lot of great talks. You're going to find out how Facebook converted you know uh, our backbone today. You're going to find out about our data center. You're going to find out about the amazing work that my good friend um, at Comcast, John, has uh, you know been working on for the last decade. You know, Akamai is here to talk about um, you know very interesting data that they've been seeing on the internet. And the other, the last and final talk you'll hear today is pretty awesome. Um, one of our engineers went and basically fixed probably the largest scaling issue for people to deploy v6 in a, on the internet in the Linux kernel. And we did that, and we put it back in the Linux kernel so that nobody else has to suffer through the stuff that we suffered through in, in the early days of, of deploying this stuff. So anyway, I really appreciate you guys coming. I did not expect this many, so um, it shows that people are hopefully you know, starting to take this seriously, and uh, we, we really hope you enjoy today. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce my good friend, the most recent uh, recipient of love on DSL reports, uh, John Brzezowski.